All right, and so what, what we recognize is, is um, as it turns out, there's a high correlation between the ozone that's produced and the um, NO2 that's produced from the NO emissions and from the VOC emissions. So the problem with the ozone or the source of the ozone in the troposphere at the ground level is cars. And um, the problem with the cars is that remember the NO2 is produced first of all from what? From NO and VOCs, okay? So once we get the NO2 in the atmosphere, it's there, but then also what happens to the NO2 in the presence of sunlight is the NO2 is broken down into a nitrogen monoxide and a single oxygen atom, okay? Oxygen exists stably as O2. Oxygen by itself, oxygen atom, is very, very reactive. And since what's in the air mostly is nitrogen or oxygen, that oxygen atom is going to react very quickly with the oxygen, molecular oxygen in the, in the air or with nitrogen to form more uh, nitrogen oxide to give us, as a result, ozone, okay? So that's where the ozone comes from. So um, the problem then is, you know, that you've got the nitrogen oxide and the VOCs coming from cars. You know, people are driving all the time. There's a lot of people driving in the morning going to work. And so in the presence of sunlight, the NO2 will be broken down to NO and O to give us this very, very reactive oxygen atom. Very reactive. It's not going to stick around for, I mean, within nanoseconds. It's going to react almost as soon as it's produced with oxygen to form ozone. Ozone sticks around for a little bit longer than the oxygen atom before it reacts with something. It's going to react with, you know, the carbons and, and whatnot, hydrocarbons and living things, basically, or things that are made from living things. All right, so this also is considered a secondary pollutant because it does not have, you know, it's not the result of the burning of the fossil fuel. It's the result of the products from the burning of the fossil fuel and the presence of sunlight. When a reaction occurs, a chemical reaction occurs in the presence of sunlight, sometimes that's called a photochemical reaction. That's the word that's used, photochemical reaction, photochemical reaction. That's a type of reaction that, that happens in the presence of light. Okay, there's something about the energy inherent in light, um, sunlight, that um, will have enough energy to disrupt that bond and break it to give the oxygen atom very, very reactive, combines with the oxygen to give ozone. Okay, this is some complicated chemistry, but I think if you think about where things ultimately come from, the VOCs from the car, the NO from the car, the nitrogen and oxygen are already there, it's hot, the NO is formed, um, NO2, you know, is formed as a result of VOC reacting with the OH, which then makes a, you know, very uh, reactive um, hydrocarbon, with the, then reacts with oxygen, which then reacts with the NO to give the NO2, and then in the presence of sunlight, that will break down, and then the ozone will be formed as a result of this very reactive oxygen combined with the oxygen in the air. All right, so um, given all that information, why do you think that the EPA suggests that you don't fill your car up with gas in the morning during the hottest part of the summer? Okay, so a lot of times we'll hear um, on the radio that it's an ozone action day. What that means is, is that there's a chance on that day that the weather conditions are right such that we're gonna build up a lot of ozone during the day. Okay, it doesn't have anything to do with stratospheric ozone. We'll talk about that later on. It has everything to do about this pollutant, this very harmful pollutant that's gonna build up over the course of the day. So why do you think that they tell people not to fill up their car with gas in the morning, in the hottest part of the summer? Well, remember what happens when you fill up your car with gas, especially in the summer, you can actually see the vapors of the gasoline coming out of the tank uh, around the area where you're filling your tank. More of the hydrocarbons are going to evaporate. And so that's just going to put more VOCs in the air. Um, when there's a lot of people driving to work, the VOCs are present in the atmosphere. Uh, people are producing NO um, just as a result of the natural combustion out of their cars. It's going to give us a higher concentration of NO2. 
If it's sunny, on those hot days it's sunny, then that NO2 is very quickly going to be broken down to the NO and the O, which is going to make conditions ripe to make the ozone. Okay, so that's why um, they recommend you fill your car up with gas at night. Give it time. Less will evaporate. Give it time for the VOCs to dissipate in the atmosphere before the sunlight comes out and all the cars come out and start producing the NO, um, which leads to the NO2, which leads to the O3. All right, so that's the bad story on ozone and ground level ozone. And if you understand, um, you know, what, what an ozone action day is and what contributes to the production of ozone can help you be a better citizen in making decisions about you know, when you're going to drive uh, and when you're going to fill your car up and so you can do your part and educate the people around you to do your part to limit um, pollution.